Journalists across the globe face unprecedented challenges in reporting the coronavirus COVID-19 outbreak accurately and safely. The fast-moving story is presenting newsrooms with a once-in-a-generation test to interpret the scientific data, tell the human stories and hold political leaders to account. While the pandemic is transforming the daily business of news gathering and publishing, journalists are compelled to be at the front line to carry out their respective responsibilities. Joining us via Skype is Chris Isinguzo, the president of the Nigerian Union of Journalists. Good morning and thank you for joining us on the news. Good morning. COVID-19 came at a time when role of journalists in informing the public and holding government to account has also been more critical. How has it impacted the scope of work that journalists are able to accomplish? Uh, well, uh, it's not been an interesting moment. Uh, I've always said it. Uh, this is not an interesting time. Uh, for journalists uh, looking at the fact that uh, we are on the front line uh, in uh, combating the spread of uh, uh, the pandemic. Uh, but uh, yesterday I'm, I'm delighted to announce that uh, one of our colleagues who had tested uh, positive for this virus uh, got discharged uh, with four others in Bochi. And we still have uh, three of our colleagues uh, at different isolation centers. We already lost one colleague uh, to this uh, pandemic. And that's to tell you that uh, nobody is immune uh, from uh, this uh, uh, virus. Uh, it's been terrible, but uh, we are still uh, holding on because uh, we cannot afford to uh, give up in the face of uh, this uh, rampaging uh, situation. Uh, but clearly, I must tell you that uh, the journalists, uh, we are always committed because uh, we have to keep the nation informed. We have to educate the people. We have to enlighten them on uh, this uh, virus. Uh, so it's not really been at the best of time. It's been so challenging. Another major issue that is already affecting most of our colleagues is the fact that uh, uh, most private platforms don't pay. They are still owing uh, journalists several months areas of salaries. Uh, nobody is talking about uh, hazard allowance. Uh, in, during his uh, second broadcast, the president did say uh, that, uh, that they had made an insurance arrangement for uh, uh, medical uh, uh, personnel uh, who are also on the front line. And he also said uh, uh, hazard allowance have been packaged uh, for those uh, that are directly involved. And we felt that uh, uh, journalists should equally benefit from this uh, initiative. So it's so sad that uh, all we got from that broadcast was just a commendation uh, for the good work we are doing. It is not good enough. So I want to once again appeal to government that uh, this is a challenging moment and all necessary uh, gestures should be extended to all those on the front line. Uh, talk about the health personnel, talk about the journalists, the media, talk about uh, the security operatives. If we don't extend good hands of fellowship uh, to these people, I can tell you that the, the effort to checkmate the spread of this virus is going to be highly imperiled. Okay, journalists uh, no doubt are exposed to a whole lot of risk. What is your assessment of employers of those broadcast organizations and publishing houses? What's your assessment of the amount of care that they are providing to these journalists to allow them mitigate their exposure uh, to the risk of uh, contacting, uh, contracting rather COVID-19? I can tell you that the attention that has been given to these people that are involved is so, so, so abysmally low. Uh, we, I recall most of our colleagues have been reaching out to me and of course other members of uh, our executive asking us to do the needful, uh, get government, get uh, media owners uh, to uh, provide them with uh, uh, personal protective equipment, uh, safety kits. And uh, we've been on this, uh, just a handful, uh, uh, I would say, have benefited, but uh, it's not good enough. Uh, this is a time for all the necessary care, necessary attention uh, to be extended you know, to the uh, practitioners. Uh, there's no better time than now. 
And they are beyond the PPE safety kits. We should also be talking about palliatives because most of our colleagues are in their need of it. When we talk about people that are indigent, those that are vulnerable, I can tell you that many people are indigent and vulnerable at different levels. And there's no better time to reach out uh, to the media. I thank God for some people that have been able to get across uh, our councils. Uh, for instance, Obai Uare in Edo State, uh, talk about uh, Lagos State Governor uh, Batunde. Uh, no, 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 Samuel Sa rather. Uh, talk about Victor Ikbazu in, uh, uh, in Abia. Uh, talk about uh, the governor of Bochi and uh, one or two other states that have extended goodwill. I also appreciate the Baywood Foundation that has extended goodwill to uh, journalists in Enugu. Everybody must have to do this at this point in time. Journalists are on the front line and we must have to do all that is needful to protect them because they go through several uh, harrowing experience, occupational hazards. Something must have to be done and it, is, it has to be done now. You talked about uh, the issue of insurance cover for health uh, professionals and also talked about how that should be extended to journalists. Um, apparently, it's something that um, is of importance now. So what is your union doing to ensure that this service is provided for journalists in, in this uh, period? One thing we must know is that uh, the very first point, uh, part of call uh, for, for insurance should be from where the person works. You know, I myself, I, I work somewhere too. So that organization where you work ought to provide you with insurance uh, uh, cover, you know, health insurance, uh, life assurance, and what have you. That of the union is secondary. I recall we used to have an insurance policy, but journalists did not key into it. One uh, unique feature of insurance is participation, consistency. If people don't participate in it, if they don't maintain their premium, uh, annual premium, then there's going to be a problem. But we are working on uh, activating it, and we pray that uh, journalists are going to key into it. No, it's not about the union registering everybody. We have so many journalists, over 50,000 in Nigeria. The union doesn't have that capacity. But members have got to pay certain premium. But we're trying to get companies that will be able to subsidize this uh, you know, for us. But as it stands now, media owners, the government, government may not also insure all the journalists, but those that are on the front line, those that are directly involved, those that are featuring our press conferences, those that are going to work even during the lockdown, those, those should be captured by government. I, I learned about 5,000 medical professionals were captured. We as expected that the journalists that are directly involved across the states should equally be accommodated in this uh, insurance policy. We'll continue to make that call. I want to believe that uh, something is already being worked out on it. Um, uh, before I let you go, sir, your quick thoughts on the assessment in some quarters that the media is amplifying only the negative um, of the COVID-19 pandemic. What would be your overall assessment of the reportage uh, when it comes to this virus? The one thing you must know is that the media informs, the media educates, the media entertains. And I can tell you that we have discharged these three responsibilities uh, the way we ought to do that. I can tell you we've done that. Uh, it's not about reporting uh, fear. Yes, you must have to say it the way it is. Nigerians, uh, even up to now, I can tell you, you can take it for free, that most Nigerians don't believe that we have virus in Nigeria, uh, coronavirus in Nigeria. And that is why that aspect of tension, that aspect of fear has to be communicated so that people must appreciate the enormity of the challenge that we have at this point in time. I've listened to so many people grant interviews and they say, that, uh, yes, they have coronavirus in some other parts of the country, that we don't have it in Nigeria. You can imagine that. That means we are not even communicating enough. They must have to come to terms with this reality. There is coronavirus in the country, and if you don't abide by the safety protocols, the health protocols, the precautionary measures released by World Health Organization, Nigerian Center for Disease Control, and other government uh, uh, health agencies, then you're going to get yourself into trouble. Not just yourself, you're going to get people around you into trouble. So 
we are not just communicating the, the negative sides. We are also communicating the fact that so many people have been discharged. They have been treated in the, at the different isolation centers, and they have been discharged. We have a, a, a good number of them. Very soon, we are going to hit 1,000. But the fact still remains that the, the negative part of this pandemic far outweighs the positives. So we are communicating them at the same time. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Chris Isinguzo. Thank you for your time. Thank you. My pleasure.